And our guest, very special guest, distinguished officer with the Rockford Police Department, Aurelio De La Rosa. I know we just uh, told you a little bit about his resume, but when it comes to defense tactics, keeping yourself safe, and if you're someone, too, who has gotten licensed to carry a weapon, there are ways to conduct yourself and ways to not become a victim. And we talked last week, and we put together a little list of, of 12 ways you could keep yourself safe in a parking lot. And Aurelio, we'd love for you to first maybe just comment on each of these as we go through the list. One of the things we wrote in there was stay with another person or a group when you're out. Absolutely. That's a, a great tactic, you know, because if, if something happens, not only do you have one set of hands, but you got a second set of hands, you know. And so that always works to your advantage. And uh, if something worse happens, at least another person can call for help. Okay. Now, another one, obviously, is to always just be alert and aware of where, where you're at and what you're walking towards and stuff like that. Yes, Right. And, you know, and one would say, hey, that's common sense. But it is common sense if you practice common sense, but it's not common sense if you don't practice common sense. One of the things that someone suggested was, you know, if you if you have to dig through your purse or to look for your phone, you should already know that before you're out in the open. Don't be looking for like not paying attention. Right. And, you know, you see a lot of young adults today walking, looking at their stair at their cell phones. And what we're trying to tell people is, is have that plan before you start walking out of where you're at, that safe location, have your keys in hand and walk out keys in hand, ready to go. Um, because the last thing to do is that you want to do is, is keep your head down. And then before you know it, you're either attacked and, you know, the inevitable is happening. Now, is it weird when I do carry my keys? Now, I have enough keys on my key ring where I can do this, but I actually put a key in each of my, between each of my fingers, almost as kind of like Freddy Krueger fingers. So when I'm walking out, I'm holding my keys down, and I've got a like a key sticking out of each finger near my knuckle. So if somebody does come up to me, I can... You know, and that's a tactic that uh, that is is taught in uh, in martial arts and... You know, and that's a good plan. At least you've laid out a, a plan, and a hasty plan is better than no plan. I just want to make so, sure I'm not alone in that. Like, it's not uh, weird. And and that's actually what we call situational awareness because you're 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 taking that preemptive measure to be ready should something happen. Okay. Speaking of that key ring, shouldn't there be something else hanging off that key ring, like well, mace or pepper spray? You could have mace or pepper spray, but you know, again, um, and we find this in law enforcement at times. Law enforcement officers mace themselves or or oc themselves because they haven't practiced enough getting that getting to that uh product and then deploying it in the correct manner so and, and the same is true with the civilians at times if you don't know how to rotate the nozzle or how to break the tab on the nozzle to use it you may have it be gripping it the incorrect way and hit yourself with it so it does require a little bit of training and i'm here to tell you i was a dj at a club and a fight broke out near the DJ area. Yeah. And somebody maced that pile, <laughs> and that stuff splashed in my face. I'm here to tell you, you won't see squat, and it burns like nothing has ever burned me before. 45 minutes. Oh that stuff gosh. will burn for 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah, I was in the kitchen of this place getting milk and stuff poured <laughs> on my face because, I mean, the bur and the burn make you scream. It's yeah. just, it's painful. You know, as a, as a law enforcement instructor, we. Uh, do the OC training and the taser training, and I would rather be tasered than to be hit by the OC. Really? <laughs> what is the, what's the OC stand for? Oleoresin capsicum. It's a uh, cayenne pepper product. Okay. It's a food-grade product, but <laughs> it burns. Like hell. Wow. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but if he just said he'd rather be tased yeah. than hit with that. That says a lot. Don't talk to strangers parking in well-lit areas. These are things I think you're even taught as a child, but we just kind of forget them in the in the hastiness of our lives. And, and at times what will happen is when you're out and about, some people will try and get your attention by saying, hey, do you have the time? Or, hey, do you know where this location is at? And that's just a tactic to get next to you, you know, to possibly uh, make you a victim of whatever strategy they may have laid out. And the bad guys always have the advantage of time, location, planning, you know, whereas us, the civilians... Uh, are always at a disadvantage because we're, we're we never really think that we're going to be that victim. What about like when you approach when you finally get to your car? You know, the most cars now it's a key fob, so you're unlocking it before you get there. Uh, is there something that you should just kind of always be doing around your car and stuff before you get in? You know, one of the things that I tell uh, some of my students when I've done these workshops is, as you're approaching your car, if it's not in a well lit area, hit that alarm button. Let it 
sound off because now you've attracted some attention and as you're getting close to your car other people are looking oh my gosh and so that's a great idea you know when you get closer to your car turn it off do the 180 or the 360 around the car take a look inside and then get in your car here's what i do every single morning i do this every single morning even though i park in a garage and i pull my car out every morning and i let it sit for a couple minutes i will look in the back seat of my car i will look in the trunk of my car because it's a it's a hatchback kind of suv and under my car just to make sure that nobody's in the car because it's a possibility. And then even when I'm parking my car in the in the driveway, I lock the doors at all times just to be safe. Oh, that's a great plan. You know, and again, it's this uh, concept of situational safe, uh, awareness because you're trying to weed out all the possibilities that that could go wrong. And you take it right from the very beginning, you know, versus you're in your car and something should happen. That's fantastic. This list we're talking about is, 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 is written on our website. It's the 12 ways to keep yourself safe in a dark parking lot. Uh, we're with Aurelio De La Rosa. He's a 26-year veteran of the Rockford Police Department, master firearms instructor, defense tactics, and also been with the SWAT team for 21 years. You mentioned to us a what-if game. Explain to us what this is and how it helps us from becoming a victim. Well, the what-if game is the uh, what we call is a concept of situational awareness. And... Um, for instance, uh, if I'm walking downtown and I've, um, I'm crossing the bridge, State Street Bridge from uh, West State to, to East State, and I say, hey, um, I see individuals on the north side of the bridge, I may want to walk on the south side of the bridge. But now that being said, should I have no other option, I start to play the what if game, okay, if... I'm confronted, I can move left, I can move right, I can use environmental it, things around me to use them as a uh, block or as a barricade. And so you, you lay out that plan and, and it's this concept of what we call memory frameworks. And you lay out a plan because that plan goes into your short term memory. And so should something happen, you have an answer for it. So just, when you get to that, like, uh I don't know what happened to my microphone there. When you get to that part where it's sort of fight or flight, your short-term memory will just automatically kick in as opposed to freezing and panicking. Right. And so, on. you know, the other side of it is if, if you don't have a plan, you'll freeze. And then you have to access your long-term memory, look for a comparable solution, and then you can, you know, move. Um, because flight is a trained response a normal response is just freezing, and that's the last thing that you want to do. So by playing the what-if game, you start to lay out those answers to what a probable uh, confrontation could give you. Wow. Never thought about how that, you know, like if you're just walking in a parking lot. Okay, if somebody came out from behind that car, what would I do? Is that the right way to sort of start having this conversation right. with yourself? If, I'm a, if somebody grabs me from behind, I'm going to turn around, swing my arm up, to block, to smash down, or whatever, you know. So you lay out those that plan right now. You know, those actions are are, are laid out. Because th that being said, at times, having the, the skill sets alone may not be enough. You have to lay out a plan. And a hasty plan is better than no plan. You walked in here this morning, and he said something that piqued, obviously, both of our interests, but Mandy's even more so. When you said... In some of your self-defense classes, you have said to men, if you're going to fight, fight like a girl. Absolutely, you know, and especially nowadays with technology. And I say, you know, fight like a girl because at times, and the, the truth is, is there's a lot, of, there's a huge population that doesn't know how to throw a proper punch. And at times when you do that, you, you could hurt your hand, you could break your hand. But if you use open hands upside, you know, the head or whatever, you know, you, you can stay in the fight and you have to think when what's important now and if i'm being attacked what's important now is to get away not engage somebody because you never know an, an individual's skill sets and what they're capable of and the best thing you can do is to get away so that you live to see another day not to mention if you scratch them or pull their hair you've got dna absolutely and when you look at that you know you see what's going on in the world of forensics dna is huge wow and you certainly made an impact when you said you'd live to see another day. 
Yeah, and um, if uh, something should happen to you and you should uh, pass, that it, that impacts four at at the max four generations of life, at the minimum three generations of life, and you know, and one life loss is one too many. So be aware all the time of ways to keep yourself safe, and if a self defense class is something that you think you might need, don't think it, do it. And we are heading into a season right now. We were talking about the soft era. Well, obviously, you've got Halloween. Yeah. So people are out and about, and they're already acting kind of weird and crazy. But now that the holiday season upon is upon us, sure. you know, you, you've got your car parked in the parking lot of the shopping mall. Filled with valuables. Out, so, yes. You know, and, and, you know, we talked about those self-defense classes. So there, there's a difference between interested and then commitment. And a lot of people are interested to go do this, but there's no level of commitment. So regardless of where you go, you wherever you get those that knowledge, you should practice some of that stuff at home. Awesome. Aurelio, thanks very much for spending time with us. No, and I want to say one last thing. If there's anybody, any businesses out there that would like a safety assessment, contact uh, the police department. We'll be happy to come out and do a safety assessment uh, of your business to, to help keep your employees safe. So it just it just briefly, what does that entail, a safety assessment? Uh, the assessment, uh, we, we look at uh, where your uh, weak spots are and what you can do to improve on your business safety and then the personal safety of your employees. And is there a cost involved? No, those are free. You know, those really? Are free at, uh, no charge from the police department. All right, so that is certainly something you should consider, especially when it comes to the health and safety of your employees, because when they get hurt, they don't come back to work. Right, right and a happy employee is a very productive productive employee and just call the department non-emergency number yes and ask for a safety assessment yes and they'll put you in touch with uh my boss lieutenant aarons and but you can call anybody there okay. and uh you can they can ask for me and they can leave a number but uh, we'll put you in touch with the right people so we can get this thing done awesome aurelio have a great weekend all right thanks guys